LeBron James is in a beef with LeVar Ball, and rightfully so, by the way, is that we'll share my opinion right from the get go. So disclaimer, yeah, a lot of LeBron James stuff, but LeBron James is doing, as Jason would say, a lot of LeBron James things. So uh, LeVar Ball, first of all, has been very vocal to say the least when it comes to both how, how good he thinks his sons are, which we did a clip on and we both kind of came to the conclusion that, all right, he's, uh, he's, he's setting the expectations very high for his sons. He's saying the sky's the limit. He's saying they could be as good as Steph Curry. Fine, we're accepting it. Some of the things we, he said that we haven't agreed upon, like the money thing and about the fact that it seems that his son's shoe deals, he's thinking about in his own back pocket. Uh, and then he moved over to LeBron James um, and that did not, serve well for LeBron, who is very vocal when it comes to things that he feels are, are set to kind of rub him the wrong way. Um, and this example, it's to do with these kids and any protective father, as we understand, he's not happy when someone brings up his sons as a means to kind of justify a point they're trying to make. So in this example, uh, LeVar Ball said this. You got LeBron, it's going to be hard for his kids because they're going to look at them like you gotta just be just like your dad. Ball said, and after a while, the pressure starts uh, sitting on you. Like, why do I got to be just like him? Why can't it just be me? And then they're going to be like, oh, you're soft. You're not that good because the expectation is very, very high. LeBron's response, keep my kid's name out of your mouth. You can talk about his brand. You can talk about his sons. You can talk about basketball. Talk about me, but keep my family out of this. Yeah. So look, I think it is slight overreaction from LeBron based on Ball's comments. However, I said this the first time with this, and my initial feeling when it came to LeVar Ball is he was jealous of the spotlight and he wanted a piece of it for his own. And now I think two weeks later, it has gotten more arrogant, more obnoxious, and I don't understand why. When you have the star caliber NBA talent playing in the tournament right now, now, everything should be about Lonzo Ball and who he's going up against Kentucky on Thursday, Friday, whichever day they play, right? That's what it should be, right? And where is his draft position going to be? Who cares about LeVar Ball at this point? And look, I know we're talking about it. I get it. LeBron made a comment. He's not the only one. Charles Barkley's made a comment. But LeVar Ball is just making an ass out of himself. And I get the argument. I do understand to a certain extent he just wants his kids to succeed. Well, unfortunately, you're going to start to cause a problem because here's what I know. If I'm talk, if I'm Lonzo Ball's agent, if I'm, like, granted, the agents aren't looking out for the most necessarily all the time for their player, but if, or if I'm a GM or I'm a player looking at him, I'm very much going to be concerned about what antics LeVar Ball is going to drag his son into. Because he's constantly in the spotlight. He's already trying to sell, as Scott Van Pelt put on, a $54 t-shirt with the Ball brand name on it. That's not Lonzo's money. That's not your kid's money. You want that. I think you're seeing A, and I know this is harsh, you're seeing A, uh, you get to vicariously live through your kids because you weren't that good at basketball in the context of NBA talent. Yeah. Better than me, I'm understanding of that. And B, some money. Yeah. You want the money. So. I feel like we have, your thoughts are cut. I've got a thought and then you're saying it. You're stealing my thoughts subconsciously. Like but the, the one point I wanted to just further on is you're saying, if you're uh, Lonzo Ball right now, oh, what is he doing again? Oh yeah, he's preparing for the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament. He's doing a good job. Oh, he's playing against arguably the best team uh, in the nation uh, on, was it Thursday they're playing? Uh, and now Thursday what's gonna Friday. happen already? Oh, every single media outlet that's gonna come in and try to push to get answers from you about what's going on in the game. What do you think about your dad and LeBron? What do you think about your dad and LeBron? Teammates, by the way, who are all huge fans of LeBron. What's going on with your dad and LeBron? All these things going into his head when he's just trying to prepare for the biggest game of his college basketball career. He's already thinking about the future. Now, he seems like he's a very mature individual and he's gonna be able to handle the press, but it, it's unnecessary. You're not helping your son at the moment because he's trying to focus on what could be a monumental time in his life focusing on college basketball for a very successful team, being one of the best players in college at the moment. So yeah, I'm completely with that. I think the comments, yeah, they didn't seem like overly harsh. I just think that he's trying to make some other story from it. Oh, LeBron James's sons are now gonna be soft if they don't live up to his expectations. All right, that's LeBron James's problem to deal with. That's his son's problem that they're already gonna deal with. But those sons at the moment, what are they, 10 and eight, 12? 
Yeah. And you're already trying to push that story on them. Oh, they're going to be, they're going to have to face a troubling time. I think they know that. I think they're already going to go through the life, always been known as LeBron James's son. So they don't need you to tell them this because what probably bothers you is that you're going to be known as Lonzo Ball's dad. You're not going to be known as LeVar Ball, unfortunately. So why don't you just embrace that? If I'm known in the future as Francis Maxwell, as of Nathan Maxwell, just throw his name out there, who is a phenomenal footballer, took the US men's national team to glory, I'm his dad, man. <laughs> Count me in. I'm done. My life is made. So yes, you can push the narrative that your sons are going to be great and you can embrace that. But it seems to me that that's starting to, to, to move over to a cloudy territory where it comes to be that you're that typical dad or mom that you see in all the Hollywood movies that push their sons a little too far, that try to get that storyline and that headline to be focused on themselves and the family name other than just letting their sons go on and be great. Yeah, Let them go and do it. Just let them play. Let their play speak for themselves, man. Look, I, uh, when it comes to LeVar Ball, I get it, it's hypocritical. Only in, only in, in media today would LeVar Ball be more known across the country than Lonzo Ball. Only would the guy who is the father of the star would become more popular than the star. And people want to care about that because it, it's just everything from it. Like, I get it. It's fu You know how some things can be funny at first? Yeah, I get it. Oh, I could be Michael one on one. Sure, it's a good for a laugh. But you know when the same joke gets told over yeah. and over and over again and you feel like, oh, you've got one bit? Do you know how many comedians fluster out because they got one bit? One show done, never again. They can't make it out. That's your. That's Levar Ball. He's a one. He's a one trick pony, and he. And here's. It's getting annoying. Here's the last thing I wanted to make about this, and I can't believe I never thought of it sooner. Like you're explaining a narrative that you think is going to make the point as to why your sons are destined for success, right? Because they they don't have you. Like they don't have you as that superstar basketball player that they're going to have to be competing against right. the way LeBron's sons are going to have with him. But what about your two younger sons at the moment, Levar Ball? Um, and Lamelo, right? Uh, no, Leangelo, Lamelo, Leangelo, Leangelo, and, Leangelo and Lamelo. Leangelo and Lamelo, because um, Lonzo Ball is already considered to be Top first three rank. Three. Yeah, um, is already going to be considered to be a star in the making. Those kids are going to feel that pressure. So how would you like it if someone was just going up to them, which they probably are at the moment, but being pushed across to the mass media saying, uh, "Well, they're they're just going to be known as Lonzo bro uh, Ball's little brothers. They're never going to live up to him. They're never going to do what he just did." That's going to be a narrative that's pushed towards them. I don't think as a dad, you'd be happy with people consistently throwing that down your throat. Comment below, like, favorite, and subscribe. Are you sick of LeVar Ball? You want to see more Ball? Should we be focusing on Leangelo, Lamelo, and Lonzo? Because that's what we will be doing going forward. Uh, I stand, uh, Scott Ben Pelt did this last night, and I'm echoing pretty much what he said. So, thanks, SVP.